Hey, it's Vu, and today I'm going to be doing another demo review, this time of the player Mousy. And he said he floats between MGE and DMG, and he often plays with his teammates who are LEM or Supreme Area, so... Possibly he might be playing against a few higher level opponents than he is in this game. And I just want to tell you guys that, look, if anybody says anything bad in any of the demo reviews about the player that's not constructive in any way, you're getting fucking banned, okay? Just letting you know, you're getting banned from the channel if you say any dumb shit in the comments, okay? I won't allow it, alright? So we're just going to go into this one real quick. And I'm going to be fast-forwarding through some of the you know, previous stuff. Um, first of all, I don't really necessarily like buying a Tech 9 on Pistol Round, um, unless you need a smoke. But given the strat that uh, the Terra Squad is running here, clearly you do not need a smoke. The only reason I would ever buy a Tech 9 is if I needed a smoke. So I smoked off, maybe if we were running up middle here and we wanted to run up mid to truck and someone needed to buy a smoke for here. In which case I would actually buy a smoke and two flashes because I feel like it's worth it to hold on to the Glock because you need to be a little bit more accurate with the Tech 9. I feel like aim punch ruins you a little bit more when you have a Tech 9. Also, if I am going to be buying a Tech 9 and a Smoke, I'll be dropping that Tech 9 to a teammate. Now, if you are in solo queue here, you might expect, you know, you, you don't know if your teammates are good, but I think it's just more worth it to have a Tech 9 on someone with armor in general, even if you don't trust your teammates. I think it's just better. So, if I was to be buying this Tech 9 in a game of my own, I would definitely, definitely, definitely be dropping it to someone. Especially since, Mousy here, you're the bomb bitch, basically. Um, you definitely don't want to have a Tech 9. It's basically wasted on you here. Since you're going to be planting, dying a lot of the time while you plant, that type of thing. You're going to have to force your way into sight. I'd prefer if you just d had a Glock there. And uh, if you had to buy um, a smoke, then... Uh, you just hold on to your Glock, you maybe buy a, a couple flashes with it. But in this case, you didn't have to buy a smoke, in which case I much prefer playing with armor. And now, I prefer playing with armor because you're going to get aim punched if you don't have armor. So you definitely should be going with armor as much as humanly possible. Um, here, just a small thing, I would have preferred... Mousy here jumps into sight over the balcony instead of jumping in a pit. There's no real reason to jump in a pit. It just makes you more susceptible to someone shooting down here from moto and uh, you're running the long way around, which means you're a little bit more susceptible to someone if they peek out from truck. Because if you jump over into sight from balcony, your hitbox are going to be messed up really hard shot for them. So, free bomb plant, all good to go. And now here you need to be deciding, as soon as you, while you are planting that bomb, really decide, where am I going to throw my smoke? Because you have a smoke, you're holding an anti, or you're holding against a retake, really, and uh, you want to be using your smoke somewhere. So the two options are going to be moto and uh, truck side. And, um... Preferably I'd smoke off truck side since you have so many players looking towards moto. You don't really need a smoke there. You only have one player looking towards truck. And you could imagine in a certain scenario, coffee here doesn't die. Okay, because that would make it a four on five retake. Because coffee just died just as I, you know, paused here. And uh, they have two players taking up from moto and they have two players taking up from truck. Or... Um, alternatively, they could have two players taking up from trucks, so one more player here, one player moto and one player apartments. Well, your team is then getting sandwiched, and if their team lands a nice shot, specifically if their team kills Dank Dynasty here and they have two players coming up through truck and a player through apartments and that player moto just kind of being a nuisance, you could definitely see your team actually losing this round because you can see your team is in very, very bad after plants. I mean, they are kind of together a little bit, but this player is isolated, nobody in pit, which is the, you know, top tier, top notch place to play on Inferno in an after plan is going to be to pit. And actually, if they're in a 2v4 or something like that, I actually recommend you, you play two people in pit, one behind the truck and one behind the pole because you can support each other so well. Two pit, if I'm ever talking to my team, you know, I'm on a team, I'm saying, you know, what after plants do we want? Two pit. 
number one after plant spot. I'll say get two in pit, then decide where else we're going to go. And uh, you guys have nobody in pit. So if this player dies, your team is actually in a very bad position. So I would definitely say to smoke off through truck here. Um, uh, but primarily, you just want to use that smoke in some way and not have it wasted. Now, there near the end of the round, you were kind of running around like you were lost. Um, which will happen from time to time, especially as you get lower down the ranks. Well, you're not going lower, but as I'm watching people that maybe will be lower ranks, ranks later on in these demo reviews, um, that's going to be a, a, a common theme, really. And you need to make sure that you recognize whenever you're playing a game, the primary thing you need to be doing. Some people, I've been asked this question before. Hey, Vu, if you could say to one person, what is the most important thing to remember while you're playing to improve? The one most important thing I'm going to tell people Always have a reason for the things you do. Always have a reason for everything you do. So that means running around through sight, if you remember this, you went like this. You basically did a full loop. If you're thinking about that in the game, there is no reason for doing that. You're just kind of lost. You need to be thinking, you plant that bomb, what am I doing next? Why am I doing it? Okay, and if you can say, the thing is, if you say, what am I doing next? Why am I doing it? And you answer, I'm going truck to support my teammate. That is either right or wrong. There's no middle ground, okay? Or, or maybe it's a questionable decision, but generally, you're going to say that's either correct or incorrect, right? So, when you look back at it, if you watch your demo, or if you think back on the round after the round, which I often do myself, you can say, whoa, that was a wrong decision, or whoa, that was a right decision. Instead, when you're indecisive like this and you have no reasoning for what you're doing, you're not, you look back on the round and you go, whoa, I was lost. There's no, whoa, that was a wrong decision because you made no decision, right? There was no real thought processing there. You just kind of ran around in a circle and you actually nearly died there, which is, of course, not a good thing. Um, but it didn't turn out being that bad, but actually with that bomb plant, you have a second of downtime. That's when I would always recommend you think about what you're going to do next, and you definitely could have. So heading into this one. Nade off that wall, I see nothing wrong with that. Um, I don't necessarily like the strat of rushing 5 banana on an anti-eco, specifically because... Especially in solo queue, five-man banana stacks as well as nade stacks on banana are somewhat common from what I can tell. And uh, that makes it a little bit dangerous. But what I actually like to do is I will throw that exact nade off this wall, okay, that, you know, bounces off the wall, lands car. And then I'll ask one of my teammates, my second teammate, I'll say, hey, gun out, watch car for me. And what I'll do is I'll have a Molotov. I'll buy a nade and a Molotov, and I'll have an MP7. And I'll Molotov off of this window. It's going to bounce and land here. And what that's going to do is stop this guy that just got two free kills on you from actually being able to do that. And the other thing that it's going to do is actually a very common way for uh, CTs to play towards Banana here is they'll play one on the corner here one right here on this corner, and one sandbags. And with that, they're going to have a very good crossfire, and it's actually, if they land their shots, they could definitely win the round. And there, they didn't even have that crossfire, and they still managed to put you in a position where you're probably losing this round, simply by having a guy at sandbags. So, I really like Nate off the wall, have it land at car, blow up, have a teammate, the second man, I say, watch car. Okay, because if I run in and die doesn't matter too much so long as my teammate can trade and get a couple kills and they're in a good position and he can even pick up my molotov and throw that himself if he wants i throw the molotov off this wall land sandbags screws up any sort of aggressive setup on banana and with the smoke in ct there's no real passive setup that should ever work with only two players towards b from a ct squad so definitely the only real situation that you need to worry about as a t is going to be that two-man stack in this area um, with five sevens. And that's exactly what they did, and it actually worked out for them. So if you just throw that Molotov, you'd be in a really good position to win that round. And the next thing I want to mention is that if you remember back to that round, um, Mousy there, he did buy a ump. And on, on T side, 
Really don't like that buy. Uh, uh, the ump is a gun where you want to stop and shoot. So it has all of the disadvantages of buying a Galil or an AK, but without doing that much damage. So you have all the disadvantages and none of the advantages. I mean, you get extra money. It is cheaper, but it's not really worth it. What I would suggest is you buy the MP7 or the PP Bison on this specific scenario on T-Side where you're all five rushing banana because the MAC-10, I feel like, doesn't have enough ammo ammo to actually rush banana with. What I like to do is I like to be able to run up here and be able to spray into spots like this and really never stop moving so I can really make it hard for five sevens to shoot me. Because especially as you go lower down the ranks, people have a lot harder trouble um, shooting people that have movement, right? And you're going to notice this. Maybe if you were in lower ranks before, you noticed that people in, you know, Gold Nova, they couldn't hit people that were moving. Well, the same thing applies for pistols against SMGs, and it happens throughout all the ranks. Even though at higher rank it's going to be less noticeable, it's still true that it's harder to shoot people that are moving. So I like using those PP buys and MP7 because you never really have to worry about running out of ammo, and you can continuously move and shoot, which when you're doing a five-man rush, definitely, definitely, definitely a good Thing. Here on this round, you just got a Glock, really. Um, not expecting too much to happen. Um, this is a little bit of another situation where you kind of, um, uh, you could say you kind of got lost there because uh, what you needed to do there was either never come out boiler and just run straight through apartments and try and support your team from there, or you needed to force into sight. Because delaying here on truck, you could see near the end of the round there, I, I didn't really pause it to show that, but they had five people collapsed in on truck. You you have to force truck. You can't delay it, especially when you have a gun disadvantage. You have to make it happen immediately. Um, here, you gotta watch your crosshair placement. Look at this. You're looking at the floor. It's very common for someone to be holding this angle here, looking on these stairs. And if they're there, or if they're pushing, you're basically dead. This crosshair placement is bad. Bad, 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 bad. Um, always keep your crosshair where their head would be if they were to peek you. Next thing you have to worry about here is your team is hitting up middle. But you really don't have any idea where their apartments player is, which means he could easily be in bedroom. I really prefer to, what I'll do, um, is actually, I prefer to go on these stairs, nade or flash off the wall into bedroom, and then come up onto these stairs, peek this, to, just to check, jump, just to see, because um, people will occasionally, they'll be holding an angle like this, where they can just see... Um, they can just see your head as you come through. It's a very good angle. I really like to hold that angle. But because I hold that angle, I know it's an angle that I have to check, right? So I'll jump just to check. And then I'll come up, hug this back wall, quick peek here just to check if they're there, and then jump across here. I will jump across. And what that means is if you strafe across, a lot of the, actually one thing you can do as well, you can hug this wall and spray through this wall. You can spray through this wall and hit people here, but they can't actually shoot back. This door is not penetrable from the bedroom side, but it is from the stairs side. So what I'll do is sometimes I'll spam that, but generally I jump across because that's a very hard shot for them to hit. But if I strafe across, it's an easy shot and they'll usually win that battle. Instead, I'll just jump across, check it, and I'll know if anybody's there. I just make sure I check it all. And then if they're not there, then I can re-peek over there or do whatever else I want. And I'm in a better position to actually have to clear that out. Into this round. Better crosshair placement for sure, but you have to make sure that you peek towards this angle correctly, this angle here. A lot of people will play here, and I like to just quick peek it and tap, just to make sure that nobody's gonna be there. Again, bedroom is very common. Be very careful. And this is terrible, terrible, terrible peek there. I'm sorry. Um, you have to peek around every corner as if you know someone's going to be there. And did you see that strafe around the corner here? Mousy comes up around the corner here, and you, what you want to do is you want to strafe out peek. So if anybody's on the corner, you strafe out, look right at them, hit a shot, free kill, good, easy, GG, no re, we win, right? Well, um, he came around the corner like this, hugging the front wall, strafing around, and holding W. That is 
so bad. I'm sorry. That is just not the way you want to be peeking corners. First of all, you want to play as far back from the corner as possible. First of all, so that you can't get hit from bedroom at the same time. And second of all, so that you have a smaller target, you can peek less angles at the same time. Because if you are hugging this wall, when you peek out and try and peek that corner, you are also exposed to this corner over here. Whereas if you are peeking, holding the back wall, whoa, I kind of lost myself there. Where am I? Okay, there we go. If you're peeking home the back wall, you can peek out a narrow angle, you, there's less of you to shoot at, and you're going to be really in a better position. Actually, um, really prefer that. Um, and it looks like you have pretty reasonably good aim, you're just, your crosshair placement is, uh, needs a little bit of work there. So, we'll see how this one goes. Again, you prefer to go to apartments, and I totally understand, but you need to be aware of bedroom. Bedroom is going to be the most dangerous spot. If you are going to go towards apartments, my preferred buy up towards apartments is nade or no, sorry, flat, two flashes, a smoke and a Molotov. I Molotov in a bedroom. Then I can peek out as that Molotov is going. Cause nobody's going to push through the Molotov nine out of 10, 99 out of a hundred times more like, um, you peek out, clear this headshot area where you will have an advantage. Then you peek out, clear out this spot here, and then you can come around and jump across and check that. It's just the way you should be doing it. And now you, uh, you are just not clearing angles very well. Um, there's not much to say about it. You, you're not really very aware of what angles that the opponents could be peeking you from because the most common spot that you're going to find that people will be playing as you come up through apartments is going to be behind this pole, especially at higher levels, and you need to be peeking that and checking it out. And uh, I'll actually, uh, before this half is over, what I'm going to do... And before this demo review is over, is I'm going to go in and show you exactly how I would clear out apartments. Just to give you a good example of what it looks like, um, the way you should be clearing apartments if you're doing it solo. Of course, if you have teammates helping you out, you definitely can get some support. Throw a Molotov from a teammate, you know, get some support in that way, and that's the preferred way to do it. But in solo queue, I don't see a problem with uh, going apartments solo, although I do much prefer to go banana personally. Um... I used to go apartments all the time, I did quite like it, and uh, I'll show you how I would prefer you uh, clear that. And so here we go, your team is hitting towards mid, this is where I don't like going apartments, because your team was already up middle, and not only that, you dropped the bomb to go apartments. Excuse me, instead of doing that, what you could have done is just gone with your team. And uh, instead of taking the risk of going towards apartments, because right now you are in a 5v4. And the way you lose 5v4s is by splitting up and losing individual gunfights. Well, you are splitting up, you're guaranteed to get in an individual gunfight, and you haven't had the knack of actually peeking that corner there. So I'm not 100% sure um, what the point really is to go into apartments. And there you get finally, finally get punished for not peeking bedroom. And that's going to happen quite often. But what I feel like you should have done there is instead of going towards apartments, you just go with your team. Hold on to the bomb. Go with your team. Go truck side or arch side. Doesn't really matter. There's no reason for you to split up there. Um, and your team's already pushed up. There's, you shouldn't be splitting up in that situation. What you should be doing, you're in adv an advantage position take less 1v1s. You're in a disadvantaged position, then you might want to take a few more 1v1s because you need to give yourself an advantage, put yourself back on even footing. Whereas at an advantage, you want to stick together with your team, get trade kills, because if you get, if you're in a 5 on 4 and you trade kill four times, you've won the round, right? You're in a, you, 4 on 3, 3 on 2, 2 on 1, 1 on 0, right? So you just try and get trade kills as much as possible. So heading into this one, you really do like to go towards apartments, and uh, same thing's happening pretty much every time. Um, this time you did peek out, caught out Casey Jones, and again, you're at an advantage in that position, so it's perfectly fine to be peeking that. Um, the nade works fine as well. Um, you have to recognize, though, you're peeking a little bit too high here. Um, just a little bit, because you can see you're a little bit too much of your body is showing here as compared to what you would want. You can see if he peeks out on these stairs, he's going to see your whole body, whereas you're only going to see his head. You want to make sure that as you're peeking these stairs, you're holding this angle, where you're only seeing their head and they're only seeing yours. And in that situation, you're going to have a huge advantage because you have an AK and they have M4s. Um, going forward, I'm going to go ahead and skip this half. Um... I, I'm sorry if this seems kind of weird of me, but uh, 
I don't think it's really worth me um, watching it because you're just going apartments every round. And I don't like the way you're going apartments, but I think it's not really um, worth commentating on for the entire time. So what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect from this and I'm going to show you exactly how I would watch that um, go towards apartments. So map Inferno. So here we are on Inferno and I'm going to show you how you want to be going towards apartments and this is going to start from the very beginning. What you want to be doing towards apartments is you have to remember that every round starts from the very beginning. You need to be really have an idea of what you want to do from the beginning. Going towards apartments doesn't start when you get to apartments. It starts when you start heading towards apartments. So what I'll do is I'll book it all the way through alt mid here and then I'll jump right up into here and I'll hold this angle because people will peek into alt mid quite commonly and actually you can open that door and peek here just to be a little bit safer but the timing's a little bit off then I'll hold that for a little bit come up here I'll jump off of this usually I'll jump onto this and then jump just to check if anybody's kind of holding a weird angle here trying to wait for people like this just so I can get information on that and sometimes I used to actually in source particularly if I have a nade I'll often throw it into there no I just I don't have a nade I prefer not to run a nade actually in uh in apartments because I feel like the nade is a little bit less useful when you have a molotov you can get two flashes instead so I'll jump clear that and then I'll actually come around here watch this and I'll actually peek here because I like to play here I'll, I'll run across mid and try and play in this spot here and uh, it can be very dangerous and they can get a lot of kills so I just make sure I peek that then I'll get into this corner and hold this for a couple of seconds just in case if I hear someone pushing I'll be able to hear them and uh, we'll be good to go now one thing I will say is I do say that I jump up here often, however, if my teammate is spotting middle with an op and he says nobody crossed, or if I expect him to call someone crossed and nobody, he didn't call anything, I will just run right on up. I'll just have my gun out here, of course, and I'll run out right on up and jump and clear that, and I'll be able to get here, and actually, if they run towards bedroom, you will hear them. If you run all the way up straight up in the alt mid, you'll hear them running towards bedroom. You have to make sure, as a CT, if you are running up, you walk right around here. And uh, that way they can't hear you. But anyways, I'll come right around here, hold this for a second, and then r head right on in. And what I'll do is I'll come over here and actually this uh, little nick in the wall kind of gives me a reminder of where to throw it right off the wall like that. And that's going to bounce in. That's not actually going to blow up the entirety of in here. They can hide in this corner back here. But actually one thing you can do is pretty cool is you can spam through this uh, wall here and it'll actually do um, some damage will go through the ceiling and uh, you'll be able to get some kills but I don't actually do that because I prefer to just throw that Molotov there peek it just to make sure nobody's running out of bedroom then I'll come on up and actually so what what it'll look like is a little bit like this Fire. throw that Molotov I will actually I'll peek this first usually I pre-fire that peek that throw that Molotov come on over peek out like this I, I like to come up and strafe over just so that if they are waiting for me it's a little bit harder of a shot for them to hit because if I strafe right on up it's a pretty easy shot to hit if I come up and strafe over it's a pretty tough shot for them to hit and I'll really have an advantage there and then I'll come up peek this strafe up jump and then strafe out peek this angle here peek out and then by this time the Molotov has started to dissipate so what I'll do is after peeking that I'll just go ahead and jump right across Kind of like this. Usually that's what I do. However, I have occasionally gone for this. Because as you'll see, that goes straight through the wall. You can definitely kill people there. It's, just, it's a little bit dangerous because if someone is in bedroom, they can just be like, oh, you're spamming the wall. I'll just strafe right past and kill you. Um, so you have to be worried about that. But otherwise, I'll just go ahead and jump right across. And if nobody's there, I tend to go up boiler. But instead, um, just because you like to go down hallway, I'll go down hallway. I'll peek out here. Usually, I'll either I'll either basically you can jump across just in case there's an opper in the graveyard. However, a quick opper will still get you. So I'll peek out. Sometimes I'll just tap it just to clear this out, and then I'll jump across here because uh, people do play here occasionally or on this box, and it's really a disadvantage spot for you. So I'll just jump across just to check, and then uh, strafe out and you know quick peek, take some shots if they are there, and I'll come on over and. Uh, this is where it gets a little bit scary because this player in pit, he's going to win this battle, you know, 99% of the time. It's very hard for you to win this battle because there's so many angles he could be playing. You can barely see him. It's really dangerous. But what I like to do is just trying to check if someone's there. So I'll kind of strafe out, try and peek this a little bit and try and get some information. And if I don't know if anybody's in pit, if nobody makes noise, I'll underhand toss a smoke just like that. Toss a flash off the ground and I'll jump out like this. Or... 
there's two ways you can do it. You can jump out like that, where actually what you want to do is instead of jumping out like I just showed you there, you want to jump out in front of this truck um, and get out like this, because then you are covered in the back from pit. And you're also covered a little bit from sight as well, and you can kind of get a position like this. Or the option number two when I throw that smoke is, usually I try and get it as close to this corner as possible, just so it's a, um, a little bit tougher for them to see. Option two is I'll toss a flash off of there, and I'll jump right out and get into pit like this. So it's very hard for them to actually see that flash, because it goes through that smoke, and I can get in a pit and get some free kills. And that's generally how I do do it. Um, it really depends on what my team knows, but more often than not, I do that second spot where I jump out through here and clear out pit like this. Now, heading right into the second half here, we're on pistol round, and Mousy has bought Dooley's, and I'm guessing a smoke that he probably threw at the bottom of Banana earlier, or actually right here, apparently, but it's actually not showing up. Yeah, you can see that smoke on the ground here, but that's not showing up for me, so oh well. Um, don't necessarily have a problem with Dooley's when you play towards B. Um, it does feel like you need armor with dualies, but it's uh, no big deal for me. I'm perfectly fine with buying dualies. You need to be supporting your teammate just a little bit more because you needed to be there. Um, as soon as that teammate started to shoot, Mousy needed to be shooting as well to support so that that player running in was shooting at two people at the same time. Free kill there, and probably your teammate... Um, Marister there probably wouldn't have died if Mousy had peeked out uh, quickly enough. So now it's Mousy alone in B. And he does go towards first orders. Love this play. Playing towards CT when you have a solo B is pretty weak because this player is going to be rotating. So I do love the play going towards... Uh, site there to try and hold on just a little bit however i would prefer to play towards new box because it is a four on two and both of those terrorists had just shot at mousy there so he knows that both players are at top banana which means all he has to do is stop them from he needs to not die he needs to stop them from planting the bomb at b and having a chance at winning the round well when you play towards first oranges it's a frag out position and generally in a 4 on 2 you don't want to be playing a frag out position unnecessarily, instead he can be playing towards back site here, delay for these rotates from uh, CT and from mid and uh, give his team a very good chance at pretty easily shutting down this round. And I definitely don't like peeking around here, you're 4 on 2, there's no reason, absolutely no reason to go for that peek. None. None whatsoever. Now it's a 3 on 2, and not only that, but Smoke Show and Dank Dynasty have 28 health combined, so this is definitely more than a winnable round now for the Terrace if they land the shots, and Dank Dynasty taking a, a weak peek as well. Um, we'll just go ahead and skip this because Mousy has died, and they did win that round, and that's all propagated on the fact that Mousy died there. Um, not to put any blame really on me. I don't want to be overly hard on Mousy here, but definitely if Mousy hadn't died, that was an easy, easy win for the counter terrorist. Because think about it like this, I said this in my previous demo review, 5 on 3, not really very winnable. Or for the t for the lower number team. So 5 on 3, not very winnable. 5 on 2, again, not very winnable. 4 on 2, not very winnable. 4 on 3, winnable. 4 on 2, not very winnable. 3 on 2, winnable. Right? One number disadvantages are winnable. Two number disadvantages, generally, not so much so. Right? So, you gotta recognize, when you're in a 4 on 2, the man that dies as the fourth player that brings it into a 3 on 2, he's the guy that needed to not die. That's the situation where it goes from definitely gonna win this round to, whoa, we're in a scary position now. Um, I definitely don't like uh, hiding behind that car, but of course you did think better of that. Um, I actually missed that. Running around that corner, unnecessary um, in general. And uh, also make sure you're not staring at the corner as you sit in there because you can look out and they won't be able to see your gun unless you have a sound. Um, so you don't have to worry about staring at the wall in that situation. Now here with a MAC-10, bit of a weird situation. The thing is, um, I don't like the MAC-10 on the CT side. And the reason for this is, as a CT, you need to try and do your best to shut down a push. And that means getting multiple frags, and that means shutting down people that are going to be spraying at you with Tech 9s, possibly armor. When you have a MAC-10, TM, well, not actually the TMP since the recent updates, but MAC-10, uh, to some extent, the MP7, although it's not really on that level, or I would say don't buy it, it's just kind of iffy if you're playing passively. Um, PP Bison for sure, um, 
that's about it. Those uh, SMGs, they're, they're a little bit weak um, because if you are playing passively, you're going to be running into a five-man rush most of the time against an anti-eco, which is not where a MAC-10 PP buys and that type of gun really excels. They excel at pushing around, being able to spray down to get one or two kills and then reload and in safety, which is great on the T side when you're pushing, not so great on the CT side when you're holding. Although, if you do decide to rush down banana, then I don't like, I don't dislike the MAC-10 choice as much. But holding passively on banana, definitely don't like it. That's going to happen quite a bit, um, but no big deal because you are on a 4 on 2 there. So that's an easy round win. Now again, another anti-eco. This time you do have smoke, flash, flash, nade. You can see that right here. Always buy a Molotov at Banana. Always. Usually I'll go smoke, nade, flash, Molotov at Banana because you do need that nade a little bit. Like to throw nades off the wall here and try and nade down Banana when possible or, you know, that type of thing. Definitely like to have a nade on banana instead of two flashes like when I go through on apartments on T side. Um, just because on apartments on T side there's not much positioning where you can really use a nade. On CT side you're more often going to want that nade. On T side I much prefer to go double flash in the majority of situations. Excuse me. And uh, so you definitely need a Molotov just to be able to delay them a little bit more. Seeing this one. Um, peeking towards car that your teammate did there, Marister, definitely weak, especially because, uh, uh, I mean, they were saving, but still a weak position. Um, if they're holding that angle, they will be able to win that duel, especially if they have an AK, but even if they have a Deagle and they hit a nice shot, they will be able to win that one. You're going to be strafing right into their crosshair, and if they're rushing, you're definitely dead, um, peeking there with a silenced M4 if you don't have a flash or nade to support you and actually make that doable, um, Without doing it dry, not gonna work. Very weak proposition in there. Losing the gun battle to an ump. Not the situation you wanna be in. And I'm mousy here. Four on four. Here's the mistake. You don't wanna play here. Don't do this. <laughs> um, when you have a teammate there to support you, where if you die, no big deal, but and your teammate will still be alive and he'll be able to kinda of stop and delay for rotates and get some frags, perfectly fine to play sandbag when you are the only player towards b you can't play here because it's too it's high risk low reward really it is because there are going to be occasions where they nade you out there are going to be occasions where they molotov you off there are going to be occasions where they peek you with an ak and just simply kill you and when those things don't happen you are at best really going to pick up two frags and that means that at best you're going to pick up two frags they're going to kill you and then they're going to have free entrance into the bomb site, and you're not going to have delayed for a rotate at all. When you're the solo player towards B, your main goal here, delay for rotates. That's your main goal. Not to get kills, not to do anything weird, delay for rotates. That's all you want to do. This is not a position where you can delay for rotates. You're going to be able to pick up one, now he knows where you are, and he's able to get the free trade kill. Just unfortunate. Really just, just unfortunate there. However... What you should have done, you get that first free kill, toss a flash, if you think you have that, you know, second and a half, two seconds where you can toss a flash, and then re-peek, and then try and get away. And that situation is going to be the best case scenario, really, for you there. Um, unfortunately, it didn't quite happen like that. You needed to use your names just a little bit better. Um, unfortunately, it didn't happen. Here, MP7 on a gun round, definitely don't like it. Buy a 5.7, buy a... Deagle by a P250, not a P250 if you're trying to go for a force buy. 5.7 or Deagle, armor, full nades, with a Molotov, you're in a better position to actually make the round work. Especially because if your teammate dies, you pick up his gun. If your teammate survives, you pick up a gun from someone he killed. And uh, I don't like pushing banana. Again, it's just, it's too much here. It's too much pushing banana. Um, actually with Marister with the Mag 7, I don't like, dislike that as much, but I would prefer Marister to actually play behind sandbags, because behind sandbags here, you can jump up and down and, uh, get Mag 7 frags, instead of, um, being in a, in a standard position, so, you shouldn't be here, this is bad, um, you cannot support Marister at all from this position, you want to be supporting your teammates as much, as much as possible. From behind sandbags, you are not in any regard actually supporting Marister. He is solo, 
and then you're going to be solo again after he dies, which kind of puts you in the situation where he could definitely die without getting a kill, then you'd die without getting a kill, and then you've lost the round already, right? Um, preferably, actually, I'd prefer to see you guys have a, one of the M4s towards Banana instead of having two Force Buys towards Banana, but uh, it's a little bit of a solo queue or, I guess, duo queue position here where you can't really maybe do that every time. Um, so we'll see, but uh, definitely you should be playing the corner here so that you can peek out and support while he plays from here. Or, I would much prefer you play the corner and he play behind sandbags looking like that. And uh, jumping up and down with the magazine. Here, he's gonna die, then you die. Like I said, that's the situation you're gonna get in. Um, when you play two 1v1 spots, you're gonna both die on occasion, and especially because you peeked out from sandbags, which doesn't really make much sense to me. They killed your teammate in front of sandbags, which means they're less likely to be checking sandbags, so you may as well just hide. Um, there's no reason to be forcing a gunfight there because you have inferior firepower. There's no reason to force a gunfight when you are at a disadvantage. There's no real reason to do so. Here, Gonna walk through apartments. This is very dangerous because you walked it. If someone played this angle here, you'd be dead a hundred percent of the time. A hundred percent of the time. Here, I don't like you running through alt middle like this, um, because they're gonna hear you all around here. They'll be able to hear you. I prefer to run through like this and then walk right around here and then drop and walk behind them. That way, that way they won't be able to hear me and I'll be able to get a good flank. Be able to. So, there you pick up the M4 and you save it. Perfect, perfect play. Perfect, love it. I'll just skip this round. There we go. Great play. And you're able to drop because of that. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, and now you're playing towards A. There's one kill. Going well, going quite well. Um, you got to make sure when you're early rotating, you can't rotate down here because these players will be able to hear this rotate. In which case, they're going to head right on back over to A, and your team's at a bit of a disadvantage there. You need to make sure if you are rotating early, you rotate all the way around. Um, yeah, you have to, or else they'll be able to hear you, or you just, or you walk down here, of course. Apparently they didn't hear you, they're still trying to force it. I would prefer if you play towards uh, spools um, after your team died. But actually, um, there's nothing wrong with playing CT here because you're going to be a little bit quicker of a rotate. So, nothing wrong with that. So, the team has kind of died here. Um, they've got 30 seconds left and it's 2 on 1 now. And you know your teammate has control of mid and you know the bomb's down. So, regrouping with your teammate here, very good. Um, what I would like to see you guys do is um uh, there's a, there's a lot of options here um you i would prefer if you both went together so you either both went into alt mid here or actually i wouldn't have disliked it if you both went towards arch all that that would be quite dangerous um yeah I'd, i much prefer if you're both in alt here or one alt one bench or you know one bottom of mid one alt something like that so you're, you know, together in controlling the bomb instead of any way split up. Because now, again, what is your goal? Think about his situation. Put yourself in his mind. What does Classics want here? Well, in a 1v2, you want to create two 1v1s. You're making that very easy for him. You're making it very, very easy. This is two easy 1v1s here. There's the first one. And, uh, he's not able to win the second, but that's just, you're giving him an advantage that you don't want to be giving away. Or, you know, uh, here you're on an eco, uh, USP, your teammates pushed in through apartments here, you should be rotating already. Um, you basically, as on an eco, you need to take that risk, where you're basically just saying, look, we're on an eco, nobody's alt mid, you're probably hitting banana, and if you are hitting middle, Fuck it, we will lost the round anyways. Like, we're on an eco, it doesn't matter. May as well stack four people, banana, take that risk because you're on an eco anyways. And you're taking a calculated risk because alt mid is clear, you're probably going towards banana. And now you're 1v4, I'm just gonna ignore this. Because that's not happening. Right here, on another eco, just kind of an unfortunate situation. This is a bad angle. Um, there's no reason to be playing here. You are in the middle of the open, um, no way to fall back, and you're not in an advantage. So, uh, definitely don't like you playing there. Um, if you want to play somewhere, you could play in boiler, trying to support, surprise someone, or you could hug this back wall looking down like that to try and surprise him as he runs up. Hugging this wall, not good. Don't do that. 
And the thing is, you need to remember, even if that spot did work out that time, still not a good spot. Um, and it didn't work out, but in the majority of situations, that spot's going to work out less than um, a lot of other spots. They're just much better places. Here, um, with that smoke, uh, I feel like that's kind of a wasted smoke. Because if you're just throwing that smoke, what's the point? Um... You don't have to control this area anyways. This is not an area that you really have to control unless your teammate needs you to control it for some reason, and they don't. So controlling, using a smoke to control here doesn't really make much sense. I prefer, if you're kind of quick peeking this, just to peek out here, just to check if anybody's there and so you don't die, just quick peek with a knife out, just to check if someone's there. And then if you they are there and they are rushing, then you smoke off this, because then you're actually delaying. Because look... A minute 20 left, you have no smoke now, and nobody went apartments. So if anybody goes apartments now, it's like you never had a smoke in the first place. Here, definitely don't like this rotate. I'm really not sure why you're rotating here. There are smokes towards B, but your teammate also died in middle um, recently. You should be in pit. Um, mid should be the rotator. You should not be rotating. You are the apartments player. You are in the exact opposite side of the map here this is the longest distance you could really get on this map other than t-spawn to ct spawn i mean you are a long ways away you should be the last rotator there are two situations here as an apartments player either you push through apartments find out apartments and ultimate is clear and therefore you flank or you are the last rotator you sit in pit until the bomb is spotted and then you rotate so by rotating here um, they could easily go back to A and basically freely win the round. Um, instead, they are going to go B, um, putting you in a 3v4. 3 now, nothing interesting happening here. Um, I actually almost would have said to save there just because of the situation you were in with that smoke through CT and both of you coming through CT. If you think about it, how often are you going to win this? There's a smoke here and you're both in CT in a 2v3. And the bomb's already ticked down a bit. Just about never. You are just about never going to win that. So those are the situations where it's kind of a judgment call, but in my judgment, you probably want to save that. Um, here, again, you are not supporting your teammate here. Dank Dynasty, um, for that first kill, he was completely alone. And now you are supporting him, but um, a little bit too late. You could have done it a little bit earlier. And uh, well, you are going to get away here. I would have preferred if, um, instead of running all the way around here, you see this little platform here. I'll, I'll show you. Show you this, platform. this little platform here, you can jump up on it and then run around just to get a little, uh, get away a little bit quicker. Here, no reason to peek there. You want to be hiding there. The whole point of playing second oranges is that they're not going to expect you to be towards second oranges so you can surprise people. Peeking out there when he's still trying to clear the angle basically just puts you at a massive disadvantage because you have a USP. You are never going to win that battle. You're going to get a dink sometimes if you have good aim, if you land a nice shot. The majority of the time, you're not going to get a dink, you're not going to get a kill, and you're going to die. Right? I mean... Same with the majority of the time you play towards second orders, you're probably going to die as well, but um, at least you're in a better position um, to possibly get a kill. So unfortunately, I accidentally fast-forwarded through that one there, and so we'll just go on back and uh, watch that round. So that's so how this one goes. Going forward. Throw that smoke way too early. There is two minutes on the clock. Do not smoke that. No, don't do that. Don't do it. Don't do it. Um, wait until, okay, first of all, they can't even possibly be at the top of banana here. So there's five seconds where you're just really have a smoke for no reason. What you're also doing with that smoke is letting them know you're, you're basically saying, Hey, 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 entire T side. We are not playing aggressive. Don't waste any smokes or flashes, because guess what? We are fucking not playing aggressive. That's all that smoke says. It says, we're fucking not aggressive. <laughs> like, that's what that smoke says. Wait until you know they're by top cor car, or you hear them, or you have a feeling that they're walking their way up, or something like that, to throw that smoke. Because not only does it let them know that you're not playing aggressive, it obviously takes away the pa the part where you could maybe go aggressive. Where you play, a member here tosses a flash over and this guy peeks out from corner and gets a free kill. You can't do that. And then once that smoke dissipates, they could be anywhere, which means you can't do that still. Um, no reason to throw that smoke forward. 
And here they're gonna come right on up, Banana. And this is where you crouch down and throw a sm throw a flash off of this box behind you, the one I'm looking at through the body. And that's gonna be a pop flash, um, just so you support your teammate. You're also in the exact same positions, which is a uh, uh, no bueno. There's the first kill and the second. Um, good play, but still, you should not be in the same position here. Worst case scenario, one new box, one first oranges. Best case scenario, one CT, one first oranges, one CT, one new box, one first oranges, one spools. You know, plenty of positions where you can play off of your teammates, where they look at one of you and they're not simultaneously looking at both of you. Um, not really any point playing together like that and then definitely no point when you crouch and spray through the smoke they're gonna be able to see your gunfire and they're just gonna fire right back and get a free kill usually if so if two people are standing still the first person to fire a bullet is gonna be the guy that loses that battle the majority of the time. Um, just through a smoke I mean not, not in general through a smoke um, usually that's what it's gonna mean um, because they're gonna be able to see your gunfire then fire back once they have calculated where you would be so it's 15 to 13 now, and you are playing corner. Generally, you want to be playing passive corner, where you're hiding behind the corner. Your teammate calls, hey, they're coming up around, and then you peek out, and then your teammate peeks with you, so you're supporting each other. You playing corner here, they're going to peek you a lot, nade stack you a lot. You're going to be in a bad position. You're going to die a lot if they're peeking you a lot. Um, Good smoke towards the bottom of banana, but think about it. Why are you throwing that smoke? Well, you throw that smoke so you go aggressive, so I hope you do go aggressive here. Um, the thing is, you're going aggressive a little bit too late in the round there, and you're looking at the smoke from the side of car, which means they could walk up down here, or they could walk into here, and in both scenarios, you're really not really utilizing that smoke. You have to get more aggressive there if you want to, or you could throw a smoke that lands a little bit further forward. Or something like that. Forward, you win the game. Great, good job. Um, so anyways, that's basically the demo review for today. I have six demo reviews in my inbox right now, so I'll be getting to those over some time. Um, hopefully, um, none of them expire before I get to them. I'll try to be getting to them as quickly as possible, but I will send you another email if the demo expires asking you to send me another one. Um, so thanks for watching, and I hope this helps.